Wild Camp. This one I've been uh, planning for some time. I did a little recce uh, quite a number of weeks ago, and uh, I was uh, planning on doing this Wild Camp um, a week or so ago, but the weather was appalling, and one thing and another stopped me doing it. I've just come down this track here, and this is a very, very um, perhaps unusual wild camp. It's, uh, you can't see much from here, but this is a salt marsh here on the Maldach Estuary, uh, about three miles upstream on the uh, Avon Maldach from Barmouth. And I'm just going down this path here, and uh, once I nip under this tree here, I'll get a shot of the uh, the actual camp spot. Flock of Canada geese there I've just disturbed. Flying out over the uh, river there. That's the, uh, the river Maudach, for Avon Maudach. And the tide's on its way out now. This uh, estuary uh, fills with the uh, seawater up as far as Dog Eshley, and then uh, it becomes fresh water there. When the tide turns, this all runs out, and for a short while, the river channel is uh, fresh water. This um, piece of ground in front of me here is where I'm going to camp. It's um, a sort of island on the highest tides. The tide will come in around this island if maybe just a few minutes, half an hour, filling up the, uh, the gutters, the gullies um, on the marsh here. And uh, then the tide will retreat. So it's not a proper island, but it's um, not even a proper tidal island, something that is actually cut off on every tide for a, a period of time. But uh, it extends, I think it's about eight acres. And the front part of it is actually down into the water. So um, we'll go and investigate and uh, hopefully find a place to pitch up. I have wrecked this before, but I um, actually spent three hours trying to find a route onto this. I started off over there where those farm buildings were. And uh, there was deep gutters and gullies full of water and mud, couldn't get across. Eventually, I tried different routes, and then I found this route uh, down. So I've uh, just re retraced my steps today. Incidentally, I'm not sure what the quality of this film is going to be like. I'll be using four different cameras, and they seem to have four different formats and the way they presentate um, in the final cut. So um, just bear that in mind. <laughs> This is a, a channel gully on this marsh, <laughs> draining out. I did notice a lot of seaweed and it's very wet. It's amazing how little deadly building. The water's been up here over the grass today. It's making its way out. I'll just go over there. to improve and tomorrow Sunday is uh, supposed to be a better day allegedly it's, uh, that's the route I've just taken you can probably just make out that um, little stone step over the gully and um, roughly in a straight line towards that deadly building and then the 
path down to there was along the front of that uh, little bit of a woodland there. And uh, I'll get a better chance to explore. And uh, first and foremost, it's uh, pick a good spot to pitch the pit tent. It's uh, quite a large lump of rock, this. It hasn't got a name, or at least not one that I could find. I'm sure it has got a name. Even if the local farmer just calls it something. Some sheep in the bushes there. There's a lot of sheep on the marsh here, but I imagine they come into here to um, escape the elements. Seems to be quite sheltered. I've just noticed there, there's some uh, fresh slate walls and I noticed on the other side as we're just getting to this spot uh, what looks to be like a small quarry and uh, there's no way they would have got um, slate out of here and took, took it to the uh, straight across that marsh however these workings here suggest that there might be a slate that was taken off this little island clearly made of slate may very well have gone down onto boats and then taken up or down the estuary. Uh, I thought the tide would be a lot further out now actually. So I've seen on Google Earth this um, lump of rock when the uh, tide is out and the, uh, the channel's a couple of hundred yards away and there's mud and sand between me and there so we'll see I've just found this um, this little uh, gully which uh, judging by the shape of the rocks has been uh, carved out by hand. It may have started off naturally and then had a helping hand. It's definitely been extended. And uh, it seems to me this could have been somewhere where slate on here was um, exported out. Nice little place to pull up a boat. And um, move stuff out. I'll get a better shot of this anyway, but that's down towards Barmouth. Those geese are over there in the um, picture. And that's looking up the estuary towards uh, Dogesley. Uh, about. Um, about seven miles upstream. The sky looks brighter on the horizon anyway. It's a little bit of a shower but nothing um, too taxing. Well that's uh, unusual. As I was walking down here, I saw this little um, bag that's it there. And I just opened it, and uh, that was inside. Like a wooden bead type necklace thing. Hmm. How long that's been there? high above the uh, water as well, it was up here, I mean, it could have been thrown up here but um, it seems someone may have even lost it, been mooching about here, i say it's quite a difficult trek to get to this place, so uh, not the sort of place you have as tourists and walker to even get to, so yeah, well, I'll uh, take that home and uh, dry it out, clean it up, see what it looks like when it's uh, all dried out.
Right, so I'll just have a little uh, mooch around this island. It's, uh, I'll start with uh, just facing up the estuary. I've had a couple of clips of this already. Uh, just pan round. The tide's really dropping now. Lots of sand appearing. I'm eyeing this place up for uh, some fishing expeditions. Some geese out there. See on the um, Google Earth when I measured this, although of course it's two dimensional. It's, um, I think it's about eight acres, but of course, because it's got a hill on it, there's actually more surface area. So it was actually measured in 3D. Probably maybe looking at um, a third to half as much again. camping pitch. I've threw those sticks there to mark the spot. There's lots of um, flat bits on here to camp on, pitch a tent. Unfortunately they're on the most um, awkward side of this little island uh, facing civilization. While that's not really a problem it would mean if you had a campfire or you wanted to cook on something it would be uh, maybe up to 200 yards away from where you were pitched. I'm going to rig up a little uh, campfire spot down there on that uh, shingle bit where, which I filmed earlier. Not any smoke is um, far from fine eyes. I won't light up till it's nearly dark anyway. Some sheep here. I'm gonna go running now when he realizes I'm here. Like some of this island have been quarried, it's made of slate. And I thought perhaps it was taken out from here on a boat or something. However, I've sussed out what uh, the slate might have been used for. And that salt marsh I crossed earlier is in fact a lot higher than the original bed of the river and if I come to here you can see there an artificial slate embankment zoom in along its length and that's got to be the seaweed level at the bottom there They've actually done this would have been a bay at one time and this island probably was an island and what they've done is they built that embankment with a slate impounded the land and gradually it's silted up and grown to a salt marsh and uh, there's a, a drainage gully down here that water in it's got to get out so there's and obviously this gully has let it out but they've reclaimed probably turned sand and mud here into um, what will be a poor grazing quite um, a large number of acres it's quite ingenious these uh, people in olden times I'm sure that's got to be a couple of hundred years old and, uh, might explore over there or just be on that little headland there in a bit um, tomorrow morning before I clear off have a look in that wood over there as well let's 
head back in here. Spooking the sheep again. This is the marsh around the back of the island. In the trees over there is the uh, main road actually between uh, Dogeshai and uh, Barmouth. You can see some cars there just below the house in the trees there. Um, as I said earlier, I haven't got a name for this island. Across the marsh up that way is um, a farm called Barch Unis. And uh, that should be a reference to um, a horse on an island, Unis's Island in uh, Welsh. So it's possible that farm up there was on some isolated patch. Uh, the house over this way, in the trees there, is called uh, Cardeon. And uh, that's the nearest habitation. So I might just invent a name for this island. Or I might just uh, put a bilingual title up. No name island. Unis Heb Enu. I'll think of something before the footage is uh, completed. The other side is out, uh, Rock Out Crop is where I'm going to pitch up. And uh, I suspect actually this is all being quarried. A lot of stone must have come out of here if it built that embankment. And this uh, certainly looks like it's been worked. This dip in between the sides. But, uh, that's sort of looking up the estuary there, and there's more marsh over there with the uh, main road behind. Bit of a wet patch down there. So on the highest tides, um, the water comes up uh, maybe a foot or two over the whole of this marsh. And uh, I did notice that when I was walking across, it was well <laughs> wet and sticky. It's uh, estuarine mud is uh, not the best medium to walk through. And uh, I mean, there's a cracking camping spot here. But it's um, a good 200 yards to where you might want to um, have a campfire, which wasn't observable if you were just camping here and uh, using a stove. There's plenty of leaves on the trees at the moment to show you. Look at this, absolutely brilliant. And that's around there is where um, I came onto the uh, little island. Still threatening to uh, brighten up on the horizon. When I first came here, trying to do a recce on this place, it took me three hours to find a way onto this place. Uh, that embankment over there, it's all waste. It's a domestic refuse, built an embankment out of this little headland here. I walked along that, it's actually a public footpath. We're just going to a dead end and you have to retrace your steps. I thought I could get along the beach here, but there's a lot of mud there and that big gutter over there. Zoom in a bit. Yeah, that uh, gutter um, looked quite impassable. There are fences across here. It certainly didn't look like it could have crossed. I then retraced my steps and then I was over there somewhere trying to find a way across here. Uh, behind those trees actually. You can see here are these um better these blackthorn bushes. That's a hedge. So it's been dry enough to uh try and create a field boundary at one time. And it heads off towards those trees but again I couldn't find a way across so I ended up going uh, further along the road and I found a track down through the trees over there. I'll zoom in over there and uh, that's where I came down to the marsh and found the way across to the island this way. And there's a little sort of the island.
we'll see. I'll just do another pan round yeah, with a different camera. There's another shower coming in now, but uh, that light sky across the sea is getting closer and closer. Yeah, this, uh, there they are. A flock of Canada geese I disturbed earlier. Yeah, one of the emerging sandbanks. I say up there a few miles is um, Dogeklai. I think I'll uh, just shelter for five minutes under the trees. Just got myself a nice bit of uh, bone dry driftwood here. So I'll probably uh, light that up later. Right, so I'm going to have my uh, little cooking fire down in this gully when I walked down earlier. Check it out. I'll just do a little pan around there. Across there's the uh, open river. I think the tide's turned again now. I have got the times written down. Uh, the problem I've got here is you can see there all this um, debris that's washed into this little gully. There's a little ledge over there. I'm thinking of having a fire on that. Because I don't know whether I'll have my uh, fry up done. I'm not going to have a breakfast in the morning, just some light. I have to get away pretty sharper, so I'll have my fry up tonight. Um, eggs, black pudding. So I'm going to make my little uh, fireplace just above all this in case the tide comes in. I'm going to make it on this uh, sand here, on this shingle. <laughs> no my luck. It'll uh, be extinguished by the tide before I cook anything. So uh, I'm going to make a, a little place there. I've also brought myself a newish um, grill to sit my uh, pans on. So uh, we'll be using that. Rigged up my little uh, cooking spot there. I'll just move over. There's another shower coming down at the moment. I'm just sheltering the uh, camera. There you go. The wind's blowing my back straight towards this, so um, it should blow the flame up that uh, stone at the back and uh, should make a nice little uh, oven. I don't think I've got to watch it slate. As it heats, it might just split. I'm not quite ready to uh, light a fire yet, and it's uh, still frizzling. So um, I've just decided to uh, have a brew on the stove. But, uh, the next brew I have will be uh, no doubt smoke filled, smoky tea. Sticking earlier, I can uh, use that as a gauge. The uh, tide's definitely turned now, and uh, I'll just turn this round. Might be a bit jumpy. That uh, bright sky over the sea still hasn't arrived here yet, it's ever so slow. Can't judge the distance for all I know, it could be sunny over Ireland and um, raining halfway across the Irish Sea. The forecast tomorrow is good, so hopefully it will be it. 
at some point. Not my luck um, when I'm asleep. So I miss all the dryness. There was a full moon two nights ago, so it's uh, still over three quarters bright. So if uh, the sky clears, that should be good. Just look onto the mountains there. Big um, gold producing area this at one time. All the hills up there were mined yeah, for gold and um, they don't even let you pan the streams now. They have all sorts of permissions and consents and all this. And the coal mines here went back to Roman times. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll see a bit of that uh, dryness later. Cheers on. Cheers. Winds just suddenly dropped. It was a bit of a breeze. It's just gone. Really quiet. Nice start to the fire. Twigs are a bit wet but um, dry on the inside so it doesn't take much to get them going. Put a bit of black pudding on. Can't beat a nice bit of uh, pig's blood. <laughs> we shall have that on uh, the sandwich. It's not quite uh, seven thirty yet, and. Uh, it's almost dark, but the rain's still coming down. But um, I just thought I'd pan towards that bit of light on the horizon. It um, keeps disappearing. Out over the sea, it's clearly sunny. Uh, although going dark now. It's been like that for the last few hours. But just over the, um, the coast here, it's just rain. Light drizzle. But uh, that's the somewhere uh, just below that light in the distance there as, as you know, is the uh, viaduct the railway viaduct that crosses the estuary from Barmer to uh, Fairbourne it's not picking any lights up but um, to the left there there's a uh, Arathog and um, if I turn around this way not a light to be seen up the estuary Nice little flame there. It's going well now. Actually picked a little bit of uh, debris up here, bits of plastic and stuff, and I've thrown that onto the fire. Probably just as bad as leaving it. It's a big problem with plastics in the sea now.
7 o'clock in the morning, the morning after the night before, I haven't had much sleep, rained all night and uh, now the sky seems to be breaking up. I did look out at one spot during the night, uh, just after midnight and uh, there was one patch of blue with some stars behind it, otherwise it was thick cloud. But uh, there's a nice little view. The mist in the valley there. The water is flowing seawards, although the tide has turned. It just hasn't forced its way up this way yet to cancel out the flow. I was right about that little bit of shingle, and I, I looked at that during the night. It was, um, the water was right up the top, it lifted um, some of the debris, about another foot up. So, something to learn, 32 and a half foot tide, cut this island off for about uh, two hours. and floods out that little uh, spot where I was having a fry up last night. I'll come back here in the future. I'll probably do some fishing actually. Uh, once the tide dropped, uh, despite the rain, it was... Uh, I sort of kept awake by the numbers of geese on here. They were calling all night and there was uh, curlews and shell ducks. And uh, yeah, even heard some widgeon uh, whistling as he went past. A bit of uh, shooting going on last night as well. Uh, the last two hours of daylight out in the marshes over there. A bit of wild fowling. Something I've been partial to myself in uh, past years. I've just put my little stove on for a, a brew while I'm just tidying up, ready to depart. So I'll go back and check that out now. Yeah, I'll definitely come back here. Probably next uh, late next spring or early summer. When <laughs> allegedly it might be dry and warm. It was very warm last night, but uh, just soaking wet. Oh, a duck flying now. Oh, yeah. yeah, just landed there. Right, back to the um, the tea making. One last um, skim across the estuary, I think. A bit more light now, so see a bit of a bit more of the scenery. A look across the uh, estuary there in the background there. Yeah, that's um, Cadet Idris. One of the uh, larger peaks in Britain. You can uh, see there now that the, um, the flow, the tidal flow is inwards. The uh, tide has got the better of the uh, river currents and it's pushing it back now. Pity um, the actual estuary into the open sea wasn't uh, a bit wider. If it was, you'd probably get a good tidal bore on this. That'd be really interesting. 
done a couple of videos on tidal bores. They're quite um, quite interesting. The seven bores, the biggest, of course. And uh, <coughs> when I watched that, it was uh, all good fun. The wave was about um, six feet high, and it would have been higher than that, except uh, there was a lot of floods at the time so a lot of water moving down the river which muted the um the incoming wave still a lot of people surfing on it man i thought to myself i'm having a bit of that so at some point there's going to be a video clip of me facing that wave probably in an inflatable canoe and getting turned upside down immediately yeah, all good crack should be quite interesting facing that paddling out to face a six foot wave eight foot wave yeah so we'll have a bit of that there's um the seven ball which is the biggest on the river seven it's um works on a nine year cycle and last year there was only one ball a four star one at night uh, in 2018 there's quite a lot of balls spread throughout the year Normally the biggest around um, February, March uh, and September, October with the equinox being quite close. Around about that time, spring and autumn uh, equinoxes. But uh, next year, 2018, um, there's quite a few spread throughout the year. So at least if I do it I don't have to face freezing cold water in February or March so I'll just have a quick snoot around the island uh, I'm all packed up now I've got half an hour to kill yet so I'll just have a quick look around the um, the island and finish off really lots of dead wood here a bit of a cliff face there it's been quarried out the side clearly comes into this uh, patch here on occasion everywhere is just soaking a lot of rain came down yesterday and overnight mm. All this uh, marsh here was full of water last night. The tide was in. For a couple of hours, this uh, lump of rock I'm stood on was uh, an island. That mist in the trees there. midget out. It's really warm. <laughs> Saw that little sheep last night when it was dark. <laughs> it's 
uh, a Welsh mountain. Welsh mountain sheep always have the tails, and they're quite small sheep anyway. Can live almost on thin air, porous ground. This is where I'll be exiting the uh, the island in a little bit. See anything proper? That was here a few months ago. I think it's been there a long time. Like a, a, a boy. If I come here again and it's still here, I think I want to take it on with me. <laughs> A novelty for the garden. <clears throat> Get a vantage point here. A little bit more. The route onto here is roughly where that heading is actually. You can see um, a derelict building there. You see that break in the wall. And there's a larger break. If you draw a line between that and uh, the island here, that's roughly uh, a drier option to cross. And down there, there's a, there, it's a deep gutter there. That's a little stone footbridge. The sheep use that, and of course, anyone who walks across the marsh. And uh, there? Oh, Robin. And looking down towards Barmouth, that's the uh, railway viaduct there. Goes across the estuary. Fairbourn's on the other side. Barmouth on this side. So I measured this on Google Earth from here to that um, viaduct, just under three miles. Looking down there, it seems a lot nearer than that. But it's uh, three miles nonetheless. Pair of robins playing about. Yeah, good little spot this. Cracking views. So I'll go and get my gear now. So yeah, bye bye sheep. Probably will be bye bye. Last next time I see that sheep, it'll probably be in an oven somewhere. Last look back at that uh, little island. As I say, all the greenery in front of it was underwater yesterday. If we just zoom back in there. You can see that. Um, where is it? There it is. That boy. Hmm. I just thought I'd spend uh, five minutes just looking into this uh, little wood here. There's an old um, building here which you could see from the island. coming here. A bit of respite. <clears throat> it's, uh, I suspect this has got something to do with um, some sort of crude slate industry around here. What's that over there? Uh, a couple of egrets. Quick look here. There's um, a 
there's this sort of uh, track up here which clearly gives vehicular access and it would have at one time gone I imagine and that building along that uh, cut there to left that wall to where I'll be walking back but, uh, there's three trees along that so that hasn't been used for vehicles for a long time I'll just have a quick look up here Something like this suggests um, even some sort of incline. There are ruts down there, so a quad bike of some sort has been through here. I did notice that when I did a recce, but I don't think anyone's been here since on a vehicle. This piece of land here probably belongs to somebody else rather than the farmer who probably owns that island. This uh, bit of land I'm on is like a headland juts out into the river and on the other side of it is a, another bit of marsh similar to what's behind me. There's an old dry stone wall there and also one over there. They sort of enclose this strip of land which goes down to the outside of the marsh there. So yeah, you can see through there where the, that bit of marsh starts. Over there. Yeah, seen two squiddles since I've just landed here. No squiddles on that little island. Not to stop and get in there, of course. Yeah. Yes. I shall uh, press on. Homeward bound.